Hi, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you enjoyed the last episode. If you haven't done it, check it out. We have learned about how to set up a Neo4j instance, either running locally on your machine or in the cloud. There are plenty of options, so please be sure to know about them to make the right choice. Today, we will create a new application based on Spring Boot. We will just use the Java driver again, and then do a step further and add Spring Data at Neo4j. To get started, head over to start.spring.io, select the latest version, add no dependencies, because we will add them manually later, and create a new Spring Boot application. Having done this, after you've downloaded the application, you can then extract it and open it with your favorite IDE. Looking at the POM, you can see that there are only the dependencies in there that are needed to get a running Spring Boot application. As I promised you last time, we will now have a look into the support of the pure Neo4j Java driver. There are new application properties available to connect to your local instance or to the instance you have running somewhere in the cloud. We can now supply the needed parameters. For our local running instance, I have for my examples, we take the local host with the default old port and the choose the user and password combination. With these three properties, we are already set to get a managed driver bean out. So let's create a command line runner for our example that just connects to the database and queries for every existing node in our database. As usually, I pre populated the data with our movie example. So if you do not know how to do this, check out the last episode where I discussed how to populate this. And we can see now every movie and person flying around in the database. But that's not all you can do with your Java driver. You can also add a mapping function. We know which data we want to return and we can create objects out of it. To do this, we have to optimize the Cypher query a little bit to get only the relevant data and the data of the connected nodes we want to map. To give our mapping some kind of target, we need to create a class for the movie and a person. So let's go ahead and create those classes. As you can see, the movie only contains the title and the description that is known as a tagline in the database and has a list of persons who represent the actors. On the person side, where we want to have the actors, we have the birthday and the name of the actor. After having done this, we can jump back to our cipher statement in the mapping function and can tell how to map a record that's coming back from the database. As you can see in the results, we get not only nodes anymore, but the mapped movies with their persons. But imagine this can get really complicated when you have a lot of fields, a lot of relationships, and also multiple relationships of the same type or the other way around. You have multiple relationship types pointing to nodes with the same labels, like we have in the movie graph. We have the acted in, directed by, produced by relationship types that are connecting movies and persons. To make your life easier in such situations, there's Spring Data Neo4j for you. The first thing we want to do now is to add the Spring Data Neo4j dependency to our project. In the Spring Boot ecosystem, there's already a Spring Data Neo4j Spring Boot starter. Let's add this first to our dependencies. We can also remove the dependency to the Java driver. It's optional for you if you want to opt in for another version of the Java driver or stick with the version we depend on with Spring Data Neo4j. As long as the versions are API compatible, you can just change the property of the version and you get a newer driver, or if you have to use it, an older version. But for this example, we remove those custom configurations and stick with a pure Spring Data Neo4j Spring Boot starter. Spring Data Neo4j is a more domain-driven design focused view on your data model, on the data you have in your database. And it is working with metadata you provide 
to your domain model to let Spring Data Neo4j map your data coming from the database or persist it to the database. To give Spring Data Neo4j all the information it needs, the first thing we do is annotate the first in class with the node annotation. This makes it a real entity to get mapped by the Spring Data Neo4j framework. Also, we have to define which property will be the identifier. For this basic example, I choose to stick with the name. So for now, we think the name is an identifying value. There are no duplicates or similar in the graph. And that's pretty much all that's needed for the person class. And now let's head over to the movies class. Like we did with the person before, we also annotate this with the node to make it a illegible entity to get mapped and persisted from into the database. We choose to stick with the title as a unique identifier for this basic example. But the next step is new. We are now looking at the list of persons we want to map as the actors. Spring Data Neo4j does not know what to do with such fields. We need to give it a hint by adding the relationship annotation and also saying which type it is. Looking at the example dataset, we can see that those relationships are incoming from the point of view of the movie. So we also have to declare this. For this example, we are only focusing on the actors. After we have annotated our classes with those informations, we can create a Spring Data Neo4j repository. As I said in the beginning, Spring Data Neo4j is more focused on domain-driven design. So we speak about aggregates and aggregates root. What is the aggregate root in our context here? Our aggregate is the movies with the persons. In this example, I decide that the movie is the aggregate root. Every access to our aggregate, be it the movie or the person, only goes through the movie. And with this domain-driven design context in our mind, we can then create a movie repository to access our domain. To create this repository, we define an interface that extends the Neo4j repository for the movie and the type of the identifier, in our case, the string. After we've done this, we get all the access to query our domain and access the data. Jumping back to our initial Corley code, we can now remove all the driver dependency and put in the repository. Now, let's call our repository and for example, say we want to find the movie, the matrix, with all its actors. But we do not have to say that we want to have all the actors because we manually already described the domain and Spring Data Neo4j will do this for us. So executing this query, we will see that we do not only get all the movies, or the one movie, the matrix, but also the actors who were defined in the database. One thing we haven't spoken about is how does this repository even know where our database is and how to connect to it. You remember maybe that we provided those driver informations in the beginning of our example code. The driver we access directly is exactly the same driver we will use now for our Spring repositories. Spring Data Neo4j depends on the Neo4j driver, also uses the already managed instance. This makes it easy for you to say, I have something I want to work with with a war driver or with Spring Data Neo4j. In the next step, we want to look at our data in the database again. Inspecting the acted in relationships, we can see roles in there. But how to map those roles in Spring Data Neo4j? We have only node entities so far. The solution for this is to create a Pojo class that's annotated with relationship properties. Those relationship properties annotated classes reflect all the properties you can find on relationships if you want to work with them. So creating this class, annotating it with relationship properties and saying we will have some kind of collection that contains the roles is enough to create those relationship properties. One important information we have to add is what is the target of this relationship. Since we have described it as an incoming relationship in the movie entity, we then say the target entity of this relationship is the person. So we add 
an add target node property of type person to this relationship properties. To use this relationship properties, we now modify the type of the relationship in the movie. Instead of declaring the person type directly, we now declare the roles type to get mapped by a Spring Data Neo4j. Let us add some more output to the world so that we can see that also the roles get populated. We run the example and now we can see that we do not only get the movie, the metrics with all the actors, but the role information gets also provided to us. And this was just a glance what you can do with Spring Data Neo4j. There's more to explore that we will have a look on in the next episodes. And I hope you really enjoyed it. So please subscribe and like this video. So I'm encouraged to do more. Have fun and try things out. Bye.